Hey, good evening. It's evening for me. I am just now filming this again. I have to say this is the fourth or fifth time. So I apologize for having this uploaded a little bit later than I normally do. However, I've been having some very bad computer problems. So with that, let's get into what the actual video is about. <laughs> so today's video is talking about the evolution of vocabularies. So these are controlled vocabularies. These are the areas in your metadata where you want a controlled list. So the most popular things for this kind of framework are subjects. What is this thing about? What is your product about? What is your article about? These are incredibly important and they are very complex. They also happen to be the thing that I love almost the most out of all of information architecture, um, mostly because it is the bedrock of all machine learning and um, knowledge graph work. So this is a really important one and we will go over the pros and cons of each type. Uh, but for now, let's just go over what is that evolutionary cycle. You can be anywhere on this spectrum and please put in the comments below where are you in the spectrum? And if you don't work on vocabularies yet, pick one and decide where they are in the spectrum. And again, this is gonna be your task, so I'm giving this to you early on. So with that, let's go check it out. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is what people commonly use in the first stage, which is a synonym ring. It's really a mapping process. So here you'll see that I have aircraft structures as my category, and then I have all of these other vocabularies, um, subject vocabularies that I am mapping to. And you can see all I'm doing is I have a column that's match, no match, or partial match. And this is part of a standard and it is ISO, ISO 25964, parts one and two. I looked straight at the camera so you knew I memorized that because I use it so often. And those ones are unfortunately not for free, but if you can splurge, I think it's $200 for each one. The first one is more important than the second for the work that we're talking about today. It's really a great investment. I'm telling you, I have copies of this, you know, scattered throughout my house because I use it so often. So there are different types of mapping. So here we're just talking about partial match, match, and no match. No match means it doesn't match whatever the, um, the target is, which would be vehicle bodies, I guess. 
um, and then there is a match where it would actually match it and it depends on how structured you're going to be with your mapping. If you need exact matches, then if it's not an exact match, it would be considered a partial match. A good example of this would be the difference between maglev and magnetic levitation. Those are two different types of trains. So they are technically the same thing, but if you're looking for an exact match, it's not going to be an exact match. So this is really a very basic way of doing it. You can see that I'm just in Microsoft Excel. I would strongly recommend doing automation to just populate these lists because you really need um, to have a human eye on this at some point. Again, you can do some fuzzy matching and you can do um, some you know, string things, um, bag of words kind of groupings to, to get these mappings all complete. But I am a strong believer that you have to have a person go through and at least check which ones um, the machine is not confident in. We're going to go into machine learning and confidence and, and F measures and all of that in a later video. So I just wanted to show you an example. This is a, a low tech way of doing it. There is obviously a lot of other um, high tech ways of doing it. And we will go over those also, but I just wanted to show you this. So this is going through and it's showing you the taxonomy here, right? Which is the hierarchy. So this would be this term would be nested under this term. And then you can see going across whether something is mapped or not. You can see the whole way across. All right, so that is really what a synonym ring is doing. It's, it's going through and it's looking for what are the words in the world that are related and what are other vocabularies, subject vocabularies, that also have terms that mean the same thing if that's what you're trying to map to. Now, you should only really want to map to things that you also have search results possible for. So if you don't have a lot of content on some of these topics, you shouldn't map them in. You should only map things in that you know would result in some kind of search result. All right, so this is that first stage, first stage, which is the synonym ring. And it's also somewhat getting into uh, the next phase, which is taxonomy. But let's go look at another tool that will show us a little bit more about that. All right, so this tool is called Protege. Really important if you want to start doing any kind of ontology and knowledge graph work. And it's actually a good tool for taxonomy if you use it the right way. So in our live video that we're going to have at the end of August, and there is sign up for that um, in the description below if you want to attend that, we will be going through uh, a web version of Protege so that you get familiar with working on a taxonomy. So here we're looking at the term aircraft structure. So you see here, this structure is very hierarchical in nature. This is a taxonomy. A taxonomy is generally looking at broader and narrower kinds of relationships. So the evolution of vocabularies really is not focused on the terms it's, or the um, serialization. It, it's really focused on the types of relationships between the different entities or classes. So when you're looking at a class, we're going to go into a lot more on ontologies later, but a class is really the universal representation of that thing. So here we're looking at aircraft structures. This term means all aircraft structures anywhere. And we're talking about the aircraft structure that you work on in your, on your plane that is an instance. This is different. Those, there's a time and a place for that. Right now we're just talking about the universals. So here you're looking at the taxonomy. If you want a taxonomy creation tool, this is really a good one to start with. There are others that we're gonna go over in another video uh, coming up in August. All the different tools that you can use for taxonomy management. So now we're gonna go into the next evolutionary phase, which is adding more context, and that is a thesaurus. So a thesaurus still has broader and narrower, but now you're gonna see things like see also and use fors in here. So you'll see there's a lot of you uh, see also's. Let's see, do we have and a use for aircraft construction. So this is not using the standards. That is another video. This is really just um, a place to record this information, this file um, that I'm using as an example. So ideally you'd be using the standards. Some standards are present here, like see also RDFS, you see that. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's really just a place to work with the data. 
So for a thesaurus, you're going to see see also and use for types of relationships. So see also is look over, right? And look at other things that are related in some way. We're not saying how, just saying it's related in some way. And then when you're looking at use for, it's a synonym, right? So it's it's taking all the mapping that you did from, from your Excel sheet or from your fuzzy logic matching, and you're adding that as synonyms so that the machine knows these all mean the same thing. And then it can also see these, these two things with, with C also are somewhat related in some way. You also get things with a thesaurus like scope notes, how to use this in indexing, whether you're doing machine or, or person types of indexing. And indexing here, I'm talking about tagging the content with the aboutness. What is this thing about? or who is mentioned, any kind of additional uh, metadata that you are assigning to your content or to your assets. So the next phase is also looking at, um, again, that context, more definitions. Does this belong to a specific domain? Domain meaning, is it medical versus legal? That sort of thing. Um, all of that is in the thesaurus stage. The thesaurus is what I call adding the connective tissue, the tissue that really makes it feel like you can move it, sort of like musculature. Um, the next phase after that is an ontology where you are starting to add more structure to what you're doing. So again, we're looking at those relationships. So relationships here, we've gone from having just broader and narrower. Now we've gone to see also and use for. And then the next phase is things like part of, has a, is a, those kinds of relationships. And those are getting more into the ontology kind of sphere. I really break these two up, even though ontology is really looking at the framework. Um, I break up ontology versus uh, knowledge graph. There's a lot of differences. Again, another video. And in fact, I think that's going to be a guest speaker. Um, some very good friends of mine, I think we'll talk about that, um, but more to come on that later. But when I talk about knowledge graph, that's when you're really starting to add unique semantic relations um, in this context. Again, there's other contexts for knowledge graphs and we will go over those, but for the aboutness, it's really adding things like you'll see here is regulated by. This is a relation that we created um, for this example. So we're saying that aircraft structures is regulated by the Federal Aviation Administration. And you can see this is yet another class. So if I click on this, you're going to see all of the information about that class. So we've just connected those two things together. Now, the nice thing about ontologies and knowledge graphs is you can see them. And I actually really recommend looking at the relations once in a while so you can kind of get a feel for what it's, it's doing. And here's how you can do that in Protege. So you go to the ontograph, you can see I, I selected aircraft structures and we're gonna explode that. And you can see I've added an instance here. An instance, remember, is a specific thing. And here I'm talking about the B747 is a type of aircraft structure. Uh, and then you see all of these different types of relations. So this wings is a subclass. And you can see here, if I hover, Wings is a part of the aircraft substructure. So you can actually see how these relations are, you can see aircraft tails has a lot of relations. You can see how these are all related to one another. Let's do it this way. There we go. All right, so it goes through and it actually describes the different relationships. You can see if they make sense, if there's any circular logic throughout. Again, I wouldn't only depend on this, um, but this is a good way of kind of checking what you're doing. All right, so this is just one example. Uh, we are going to go into these tools and how to actually structure these in much more detail in another video. All right, so I hope that you found that informative. Um, we are going to do a lot more with each one of these frameworks, but suffice it to say, the farther up in the evolutionary cycle you are, the better off you're going to be with some of the more smarty pants things that you can do with metadata. And we will go over those as well. So with that, where are you in this cycle for yourself? Let me know in the comments below. I would really love to find out because that will help me understand where to focus on some of these videos. So with that, I wanna thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, bye.